Okay, so week 13. All right, week 13 uh, is another extra credit week where if you don't do these things, you are not going to lose points. Uh, but you should do the final exam, right? Final exam is worth 100 points. Uh, what do you have to do for it? Well, there it is, right? You're going to use a loop to make 110 random numbers between 20, 20 and 30. Uh, store them in a variable of a list type, right? Append all these different values, use the random int function. Uh, then you're going to sort the list using your bubble sort, right? Don't use sort or sort it or any other built-in Python function. Uh, if you know any other sorts that you can write yourself like a merge sort or, or select sort or insert sort or shell sort, be my guest. But what we learned was bubble sort, so use that. Okay, uh, show the sorted list and the unsorted list. Find the sum and the average of these lists or of this list. Uh, don't use any functions that you haven't written. You are welcome to use your own sum or average functions as long as you provide me the code for your own functions as well. Okay, uh, find the median. Again, you have to use the median function that you write yourself. You can't use some build-in build function from Python. Uh, and the median for 10 numbers is the average of the two numbers in the middle. Okay, we, I think we had to do something like that already. Uh, and then also show how many numbers are evenly divisible by two. So if num modulus two equals equals zero, that's true. And yeah, submit all that just like any other program up to this point with a multi-line comment at the bottom showing me that it works. And that's your final project. Lots of points and very easy to earn. Okay. Uh, so, any questions on this? Okay. Uh, so, the next thing that I want to tell you now is uh, this uh, GUI business. Okay. So, GUI or graphical user interface, I should tell you is, let's see if I have it in here maybe, where did I throw it? Yeah, well, here. Here's an example of a GUI. So, this is what you're going to have to create. Uh, so you're going to have to create a little window with a bunch of buttons similar to a calculator, right? Uh, so you're going to have all these numbers, one, two, three, th uh, nine, and zero. You have your plus, your minus. You have a dot in there if you want to do floats, decimal numbers, and you have the equal. So just for simplicity's sake, we're only going to do multiplication, uh, addition and subtraction, right? If you can do those two, I'm pretty sure you can do the rest of them, okay? How are we going to do this? And by the way, this is a step away from the traditional programs we've been writing up to this point where you run the program and everything happens in the command line, right, in this little shell. And you enter things in the keyboard and information shows up in like just a text format. Well, this year what we're going to do is called event-based programming. Well, so these graphical user programs uh, when they open up, you can see that there's a whole bunch of different things in there, right? So all these different buttons, those are your objects. And that's why I kind of wanted to introduce objects. Remember, we did the bag and all that stuff. Okay, so the, the, those objects, each button is an object, basically. Okay, and some of these, the, the bot buttons have um, a way to tell you if they have been clicked. Okay, so those are the events. So what is an event? An event is, if I click on the button, that's the event, right? Well, sometimes you can tab between the different buttons. That's also an event, right? So there's different events. You can, there's like on key press, on key release. So there's various events that could be triggered by these buttons. And what you're gonna do is, you have to basically write the code for what happens when the event occurs. Right, so basically, if I if I click this button, what happens? If I click this button, what happens? If I click this button, what happens? What's going to happen is every time we click a button, we're going to the event is going to be to add the text of this button into little into the little text box on top. Right. So if I click the button one, it shows one. If I click the button two after that, it shows one two. If I click the button three, then it shows one two three. Right. And maybe I should just show it to you so you can see what it looks like. I have it in there somewhere. You look at the stuff that's hidden from you. 
and it will not look as good on a Mac as it does on Windows, but uh, nothing we can do about it. GUI. There's my GUI. There's my GUI. Yeah, and you don't see that. That's hidden from you. So, GUI calculator. Let's have a look at it, what it looks like, and what happens. Okay. So here's my calculator, and I'll show it to you, no big deal, all right? So what happens here is uh, we have uh, import TK enter, and what is TK enter? It's the library that allows you make, to make windows, right? That's the one you need to make the graphical user interface, the GUIs, okay? Uh, and just for simplicity's sake, I said, well, I'm gonna make a list, and this is going to be the list for all my buttons. Since I'm going to have a bunch of buttons, why don't I, why don't I just put them in the list? It makes it easier. Uh, I'm going to make a new window. So I'm going to make a variable window, which is equal to tk enter that tk. This is how you make a window, right? So this is a window var variable called window, which is going to be for a window. And this is how you make the window. This is going to be the text that is on my little window. Uh, this is going to be a text box. Right, so let me just run this thing so you can see what, see what it looks like. So if I run it, maybe I should close this. No, that's still running. All right, so here's here's what it looks like on a on the Mac. Right, it does not look that it does not look very nice. Okay, it will look a lot better on Windows, I promise. Okay, so in in a Mac you can't really I haven't found a way to tell it how high these buttons to be. Even if you do, it doesn't take it. It kind of does whatever it wants with it. So anyway, uh, here's what's going to happen. If I hit a button one, there's a one, two, there's a two, three, there's a three. If I do a plus, and then I do four, five, dot, six, seven, and then I do an equal, then it does the math. Yeah, it works. So you see how it works, right? So that's, that's what we're going to do now. Let's see how I do that stuff in my little uh, code. So first of all, this, calc this text calculator is for this right here on top, right? Then we go down. I can also tell it to set the size of the window right here. I have, a, I have it commented out because it doesn't really matter, okay? It kind of resizes itself also. Uh, this piece right here, E is equal to TK intra entry window with 48 is telling it put this text box. There's a text box here, so I add it there uh, and make it a... 48 character wide or whatever, 48 something, right? So I guess you can type in 48 characters in here before it starts hiding them, okay? So this is the, this is the entry box, right? The entry box is, uh, where did it go? Is this, this little area that, I, that we have highlighted in blue, right? I'm gonna put it in a variable called E, right? And it knows that this is a text entry area because it's from the TK enter library, right? And that's where all that information is stored. I'm telling it to add this entry area into my window, right? So this, this is the window, which is this variable right here. And here I'm telling it associate this entry or the text box with the window. In other words, place it inside the window and make it this wide, okay? So that's that. Then uh, I also have to tell it uh, how, to, where to place it. So I'm going to tell it E, you should be placed in a grid and row zero column span four. So gr this is the, if you have an, like an Excel spreadsheet, imagine this is your first row, this is your second row, this is your third row, this is your fourth row, five, fifth row, right? The first row is, is where the text area is, text box or the entry or whatever it's called. This is the row zero, and it's column span force because it takes up the space of four columns. Each of these are columns, right? So this is column one, column two, column three, column four, and my text box takes up, is as wide as all of the columns, right? So that's the column span four. So you always start with zero. Yeah. What's that? Row zero is this row right here. So this this row right here is the zero. Yeah. Let's see if I can. Uh, yeah, we'll do it later. 
Okay, so now the next one is uh, button number button number zero, right? Uh, button number zero. Uh, ta, 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 ta. Okay, yeah. Button number is basically what I do is I create a loop. These two nested loops right here, this and this. They're going to just, it's just a clever way to add these buttons. The one, the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, the seven, the eight, and the nine are basically every every time I add a button, I change the text of that button. So this is this is the text that we're going to put in, in each of these buttons. What is the text? Well, it's literally the button number, which starts at zero. So the first time I add a button, it shows a one. And then the second time I add a button, it shows a two. So that is this piece right here. So this is just telling it, create a bunch of buttons, put them in the window. This is the text that's going to be in each of these buttons. And these are going to be the dimensions of the buttons, right? And then again, on the Mac, the height doesn't really tell it much. It just doesn't do anything with it. You define the height and the height? Yes, I'm telling it the, the width and the height of these each of these buttons is going to be this right here. And if you run it on Windows, you can see how they change and re resize. Uh, the height in Mac, it just doesn't do anything. Okay, so it just doesn't work with it. Um, okay, so that's that. And then this piece, command, lambda, and button, and function stuff, I'll talk about it in a second. Uh, so basically, again, what we're doing is we're, we're, every time we go through this loop, we make a new button with these specifications. And the only thing that changes in, in the specifications of the number of the button is the, the number of the button. Right, so it's basically the same kind of thing and just changing the text of it. Okay, and we're going to be adding it to the empty list for the buttons that we created in the beginning. Okay, all right. Uh, let's look at some more buttons that I have in here just to see what, what we're doing with uh, some of the other ones. So this was just the buttons one through nine. Right what is that? I'll talk about it in a second. Let me go. Let me just show you how, how how to add the other two buttons, or the other few buttons. So in here, I'm adding to the list of buttons another button to the window. This time, this button is going to be my little minus, right? So that's this button right here. Okay. Uh, that button is uh, going to have these dimensions, and uh, it's going to be placed in row row two column three, right? Row zero, row one, row two, right? Column zero, one, two, three. That's the column three, that's the minus, right? And don't, don't ask about the plus, I don't know where that is. I don't know where that, where, oh, where, did, where did I add the plus, I don't know. Oh, it's right here at the bottom, okay? So there's some more buttons that I'm adding. I'm adding, uh, so this was the, the button minus, I added it there. I'm going to add another button uh, after it, which is the zero, right? The zero is going to go here, here, which is going to be in my row four, column two. Oh no, row two, row four, column span two. So row zero, row one, row two, row three, row four, and then column span two tells it take, take up as much space as two of these buttons on top or two rows. Right, column span two tells it take up two rows, or two columns, sorry. Okay, so that's where the zero goes. Let's look at the dot, dot is this one, right? So that's again going to be in row four, but this time is in column two, right? Wait, zero, zero, you have a, what is column now? Which one? Zero, zero is on column two. Row, zero is row, is the one that I have highlighted. Row, row four, column span two, so. Row zero, row one, row two, row three, row four. Huh? What's that? Oh, the equal. Well, we'll get to that. So the equal is down, right here. So let's look at the equal. So the equal is row three, zero, right? Row zero, row one, row two, row three, right? But see how it's like in the middle. That is because uh, the equal, I'm telling it, row span is equal to two. So that tells it, just like the other one here, we had a column span is equal to two for the zero. Yeah. Row span does the same thing, but for rows. So that's why it's high, like halfway in the middle. And trust me, it looks way nicer. It's actually, if you, if you see, uh, I have changed the height of the equal. 
So if you look at the actual thing on the calculator here, it looks like that. It's supposed to look like that, all right? It's just the Mac does not cooperate, okay? All right, so do you get how we add the buttons? So that's how we're gonna add all the different buttons, okay? And we also have to add the dot and we have to add, uh, right? And all the other ones, okay? Uh, so let's see what else do I have in there. So we, we went over the data, showed the zero, the, the, the plus. Let's, let's get to the plus because I don't think I show the plus. The plus is the one I didn't. So plus again, right? Plus is in row one, right? So this is row zero, row one, right? Uh, and then it's column three, zero, one, two, three, right? So that's where it is. Uh, and yeah, so that's it. And then um, since and this is basically just telling it since this this button has already been added to the button to the list of buttons you can t uh, you can operate on the list itself to tell it where to place it on this grid okay does that make sense okay so the one thing I gotta tell you about is this command lambda business and the function crap so how does that go well if you notice here uh, let's look at the zero okay so if I have a zero I'm saying command is equal to lambda, n is equal to zero, my function zero. Okay? So what's going to happen is, what I'm basically telling it is this. This line, this line, this whole line here is, is simply telling my program to do this. Anytime a button is clicked, we're going to call this function. Anytime the button zero is clicked, we're going to call the function, we're going to send the number zero into the function. Every time uh, the button with a dot in it is clicked we're gonna call the function and we're gonna send a dot into the function as an argument right if we hit the minus we're gonna call the function and we're gonna send the minus inside of the function as an argument so it's just a way for, for it to detect which button was clicked and then send over the appropriate text for that button into the function so the function will know what this function will know which button clicked it basically by the text that is being sent into it. Okay, if we look at the little loop here, n, right, is my button number plus one, which is basically the text of the button, right? And I'm sending over n every time, which is basically the text, the, the, the number for each of these buttons. Okay, so does that make sense? Now let's look at the function this is all there is in the function and don't worry nothing fancy crazy happens in it so first of all uh, let's have a look at this thing so if I clear this and then by the way you can add a clear button too uh, okay so uh, the, t the function takes a button number right what is the button number well if I had the equal sign the button the button number is the equal sign if I hit the plus then it's a then this this is equal to plus if I hit the dot then this thing here is equal to that right so if I hit the, the number one right button number is going to be equal to one and we're going to insert that into my E and what is the E E is my text entry area right that's my text entry area so every time the first thing that happens when I click the function is the value of this number gets inserted inside my text area. There, and then there, and then there, right? This number 50 here is necessary because if I don't have it, then the numbers are going to be inserted in this order. If I insert it, if I put a one, it will go there. If I put a two, it will go, if I click a two, it will go there. If I, now if I click the three, it will go there. Right, the way I prevent that, and it will do this for every letter, right? So the way I prevent that is I tell it, okay, 50 basically tells it for the first 50 of these, you're gonna insert them in the correct order. Why, why it's necessary, I don't know. It just, you have to do it in order for this to work that way, right? So that's the reason why there's a 50 in there. And then we're just inserting the text of the button that is being clicked inside the text area. So then what will we do? We're going to get an equation, right? Equation is equal to E dot get. So basically, every time I click the button, this here becomes equal to whatever's here, 
right? So if I if I click if I click two, then now this text becomes equal to or this string becomes equal to this text. Okay. Now if I let's say at some point I do a plus and then I do one or something, right? So as soon as I hit the two or exam for example, then this this is what this is equal to, right? So this becomes equal to this text. Okay, if at any point, right, this keeps going on and on and on and until at some point I click the equal sign. So if that button that I'm clicking, I'm, I'm passing over, happens to be the equal sign, then that here is going to be true. Okay, if it is true, then we're going to split the equation. In other words, I'm going to split this here. Whoops. Undo. Nope. It can, do, it can do multiple pluses, by the way. So as soon as I hit the equal sign here, here's what's going to happen. So first I hit the equal sign, and it's going to happen all at once, right? So it will get this here, this piece. When I split it, right, so we're going to get this string. So this, this whole thing here is what we got in the equation, right? When I say split is equal to equa equation split by equal, then it will grab this piece and it will put it in a list, right? So the first thing in the list is going to be this, and then the next thing in the list is going to be like nothing. So it will, it will result in something like this, right? And we're only doing this so that we can get rid of the equal sign actually, right? So what I, what I wanna do is I wanna get the whole thing right before the equal sign, right? Which is basically this piece, right? Which is this piece here, okay? So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it eval split equation zero. In other words, evaluate this whole thing here. Okay? And eval is one of those uh, built-in functions into Python that will evaluate an equation. Right? As long as you feed it in the right format. As long as you do something like one times two plus this, right? Whatever it is. If you, if you just feed it a regular equation, everything except an equal sign, right? If you feed it this whole thing, right? My eval is going to give me the actual value that this thing evaluates to, okay? So let's do this again. So uh, I'm gonna do one, two, plus three, four, right? Then I do the equal, we grab this, right? We grab this whole thing here, right? That is what this here is equal to, right? And then this goes here. And that is the one that we're going to evaluate using the eval. And then we're gonna get an answer. And then we're going to insert that answer just like we did in the beginning here. And that is how the result, this piece here shows up at the end. Okay, that is the actual answer, which is what we evaluated. Make sense? So that's the GUI calculator. Okay? So this is the function that reacts to whenever a button is being clicked. Uh, and then this here window main loop is to just get the whole thing shown up in order for it to show to, to start working to show itself. Okay? So that's the GUI calculator. Any questions? Alright, so if you watch the video, you can pretty much follow and create this whole thing. Uh, so I pretty much give you the answer, okay? So that's the GUI calculator, which is a good chunk of points, and I highly recommend that you do it, okay? So we're gonna go in there and let's see. GUI calculator. And the next thing that I wanna tell you is about this turtle. Okay, so there's a couple example programs that I have in there. One of them is Draw Sun. Let me show you what that thing is. And this is again a kind of like an introduction to object oriented programming. All right, it's just a program for you to draw some things on the screen. So there's a library called Turtle. And the uh, turtle library allows you to, you know, draw lines and stuff like that on the screen. And you can do all kinds of stuff with it. 
Okay, I have I had one of the students uh, do, uh, you know, the data mining project with with the all the months. He actually used the turtle library to graph graph the thing for all the different months, the data. I thought that was pretty clever. So yeah, I've seen that. So you know, it's just a, it's a tool. It's really not for that purpose though. But here, uh, let me give you some example, like simpler example of how this works. So that's that one. You have that as an example. Uh, Alex Turtle. All right, let me show you that one. So it, it, all it is is uh, you know there's a library called Turtle, right? Just like there's a TK enter which allows you to make windows. Uh, I'm going to make a variable called Alex, which is going to be equal to this Turtle object, okay? And then you can move it around the screen. I can tell it go forward 50 spaces, turn left 90 degrees, go forward another 30 spaces, right? And if you look at, uh, you know, there it is. That's all it did. Okay, uh, if you look at some of the documentation for Turtle in the Python online library, uh, you can see that you can change this thing. The arrow can be like an actual turtle, you can ch change it to different shapes and stuff like that. It's really just to teach kids how to program, but I, I think it's, uh, it's actually pretty commonly used in programming classes. Then graphics, All right? I have some examples in there. Let me show you what, what I have with this turtle. Okay, so uh, this thing is going to draw a square. I don't know if it's just a square. Well, let's just see it. Seeing is believing. There you go, so it makes a square, makes a circle, makes a triangle, makes a, I don't know what that is. One, two, three, four, five pentagon. Okay, and a straight line. Okay, so how does this thing gonna work? Uh, well, look at this thing here. So first of all, this is your code for a square, right? So I'm actually using a loop to tell it to go forward a certain distance, turn uh, an angle of 90 degrees, and then do this four times, okay? So that, that creates your uh, little, where did it go? That creates your little square. Then underneath is the code for the, sing, for the circle. So since the square was right here, I'm telling it pen up so it stops drawing that tells it to lift the pen basically off the paper. And then I tell it go to 100 to 100. That tells it go in this coordinates where the center of the circle is going to be red, uh, drawn. I tell it change the cir circle color to red, then put the pen down and then draw a circle with a radius of 30. And that makes me the circle. Then after that, after as soon as the circle is drawn, I tell it lift the pen, all right? Then go to a coordinate of x of negative 50. So that tells it start from here, go left minus 150, and then maybe even go up 80, right? So it's gonna be minus 50, 80. It's probably gonna be this corner, the top left corner of your green triangle, right? Uh, and then set heading tells it go in a certain direction, right? Using the, what circle is it? Coordinate circle, I forget, damn it. Polar circle, nobody knows. Okay, anyway, 90 degrees, tells it to go 90 degrees. I think that's probably going up, All right? Goes up, so it's probably here, goes up. Uh, and uh, pen color is green, Go pen, pen down, puts the pen down, and it starts drawing the triangle and makes the triangle. Then it does another pen up, and we draw the little oct pentagon that you have underneath. Then it does another pen up, and it draws a line. Okay, so just different examples of how you can draw things with Turtle. And the assignment that I have to go with this, and by the way, this, uh, like I said, it's a, a way to introduce programming to children. You know, the Turtle is the object and you tell it to, you program the Turtle to move around by just, you know, doing this right here. So uh, I have a couple of things for the Turtle. The first one is, uh, I have a couple of shapes for you. One is a little rectangle, one is a little triangle, and then the third one is a box without corners. So the box like box without corners is similar to the rectangle, except you have to tell it pen up and pen down a whole bunch of times. 
Okay, so that's one. And then the other one is uh, your total little smiley face for which I give you the code, most of it. All right, so I give you the code, uh, but it's not complete. I think I give you one of the eyes and half the smile and that's it. So what you have to do is you have to, uh, oh no, yeah, I give you the whole face. So this is the whole face. And I give you the left eye. Uh, and then you have to do the right eye. And the smile, I think I give you half the smile. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I give you the whole side, the whole, the whole smile. Okay. And then the nose is just a straight line. So you're going to have to play around with the directions of the nose and all that stuff. Uh, if you want to play around with it some more, try to figure out how to turn that smile upside down. It's, it's, you know, it's just basically changing the, it's, it's literally working with the same exact code, but changing the numbers a little bit so that it, you know, draws the thing the right way. Okay. So that is turtle and graphical user interfaces and your final exam. Any questions? All right. So with that, I think I have said everything I wanted to say about uh, week 13 and GUIs. And I'll post the videos, video, and uh, you let me know if you have any.